This is the story of how Boeing brilliantly beat Airbus in a multi-billion dollar strategic move and what you can learn from it. During the 1990s, Boeing and Airbus joined forces in a market research project. The two companies talked to many customers, studied the market, and ultimately came up with vastly different strategic directions. Boeing even helped Airbus with its decision and beat Airbus in part by sharing knowledge on how to build big planes. In the airline industry, there are two primary strategies for how to connect passengers with where they are and where they want to go. One strategy is the hub and spoke model, where you fly from where you are to a major airport and then from there to wherever you want to go. You might even have more flights to get you to your final destination. To be efficient, flights between major cities use larger planes with higher seating capacity. This saves airlines money, but takes you longer to get where you want to be. Add in a drive to and from each airport and you're in for a long voyage. In contrast, the hub and spoke model is the point to point model. For this strategy, airlines seek to get you to your destination in the fewest flights possible without all the layovers. A number of airlines are so committed to point to point that they provide no connecting flights at all. To be efficient with a point to point model, smaller planes are often used so they can fill all the seats. Having drawn different conclusions from their market research as far as what airlines wanted from their planes, Boeing and Airbus went in completely different directions. Boeing was the older, more established airline that had long ruled the skies with the Boeing 747, first flown in 1969. The 747 is a massive airplane that can hold up to 524 passengers, and it supports the hub-and-spoke model very well. Airbus decided to beat Boeing with a bigger plane. They spent around $25 billion to develop the Airbus A380, an aircraft with one and a half times the floor space of the massive Boeing 747 and with capacity for up to 853 passengers. Richard Avalafia, VP of an aerospace consulting group, said that Airbus had fuselage envy of Boeing's 747. They thought they could beat Boeing by having a bigger plane. With so many passengers inside, the Airbus A380 is only good to connect major cities. In addition to having enough passengers in a city to fill a plane, many airports don't even have runways long enough for either the Boeing 747 or the A380 to take off and land. Airbus hoped that having a plane larger than the 747 would give them a strategic advantage with airlines and that the airlines would line up to buy the larger plane. Boeing chose a different direction and introduced the smaller Boeing 787. It was designed as a mid-sized plane, fast and efficient. The 787 was 20% more fuel efficient compared to similar sized aircraft and was designed for passenger comfort. Compared to the A380's maximum seating capacity of 853 passengers, the Boeing 787 initially held just 242 passengers, although that has since been expanded to 296. The 787 was named the Dreamliner after half a million votes were cast in a promotion with AOL Time Warner to name the new airplane. And the Dreamliner is also fast. The 787 once set a ground speed record of 801 miles per hour, or 1,289 kilometers per hour, with a plane full of passengers on board. Granted, that record was set with a strong tailwind, but it saved 48 minutes off a 10 and a half hour flight from Los Angeles to London. Compare that to a 15 or 20 hour trip using the traditional hub and spoke flight model complete with the hassle of a layover in some random city. Multiple airlines now use the 787 for long haul flights such as Los Angeles to London. Although this speed record was largely aided by a favorable jet stream, the Dreamliner is an amazing flying machine. The 787 has another major benefit with a flight capacity of a little less than 300 passengers, it can also connect smaller cities with an efficiently filled plane. Full planes are more efficient for the airlines, and they are also more convenient for passengers who are able to get to their final destination with fewer flights. Because it was 20% more fuel efficient compared to similar sized aircraft, the Dreamliner was also a hit with airlines. Fuel savings help airlines make a profit. A faster, more comfortable plane that saves on fuel cost is sure to be a hit with customers, and it was. Travelers prefer comfort and the convenience of fewer flights over the opportunity to fly on the largest passenger jet in history. 
In all, Airbus built 254 A380s before ultimately stopping production of the design. The airlines simply didn't want to buy them. Despite engineering excellence, it was a financial failure and Airbus lost money. In contrast, Boeing has built over a thousand Dreamliners and it's still going. The 787 Dreamliner has been a financial success for Boeing. Granted, there have been some issues such as in 2022 when delays hurt performance, but that hasn't been the norm. And today, over 600 new 787s have been ordered by airlines around the world so the future looks bright for Boeing's Dreamliner. Companies make a lot of different decisions when they are building and carrying out their strategies. Some of these decisions are called tactical actions, and these refer to things like price changes or marketing campaigns. If mistakes are made with tactical actions, they're usually fairly simple to be able to reverse and undo the damage. Granted, some actions may alienate customers and cause more lasting damage, but it's not the norm. But other decisions lead to what we call strategic actions. These are more expensive and they take a lot more time, even potentially years, to implement and to carry out. Designing and building a new line of aircraft falls into the strategic action category. So what can we learn from this? Despite working together to study the industry and the market, Boeing and Airbus came to completely different conclusions. Boeing understood what customers, both airlines and passengers, wanted, and Airbus did not. Travelers wanted the convenience of a single, comfortable trip, rather than a hub-and-spoke travel experience. Airlines wanted a fast and efficient plane to maximize their profit. Boeing provided what both travelers and airlines wanted with the 787, while Airbus created a monstrous plane that too few airlines ever bought. It almost seems like Boeing tricked Airbus into making a mega plane by also sharing their experience in how to make larger planes. Ultimately, companies should build their strategies around attracting and serving customers. Give customers a reason to choose you over and over, leaving your competition behind. Please subscribe for more on business, strategy, and the people involved.